Hickok 45, welcome to the compound. We're gonna compare a couple of uh, firearms. They're not pistols, they're not shotguns. You're probably familiar with them already. The Mossberg Shockwave and the Remington TAC-14. All right, very similar in many ways. And they're both 14 inch firearms. We're gonna shoot them both, talk about them, and we're gonna tell you which one you ought to buy because we're very uh, adamant about that and uh, we, we know what you uh, what's best for you? Just kidding. Let's shoot them. Put my ears on. I got rounds in the magazine. And now I've got rounds in the chamber. Of course, everybody knows without a pistol or without a shoulder stock uh, and a longer barrel, you can't really hit anything. Let's try though. Whoa! Mr. Pumpkin! Get the <laughs> Another pot. Oh, I'm out of ammo. Oh well, five isn't bad. Let's try some more. We've got a Remington here. <laughs> a cowboy. Oh, a pot. <laughs> oh, we're out of ammo. Okay. Hmm, not bad. Now, for those of you who are watching closely, you notice one difference, I hope. All right. But first, let's look at the similarities. All right. Uh, these came out roughly around the same time, you know, the Mossberg uh, was first out, I guess, and then the Remington. Uh, but they both have the same grip, the Raptor grip, and I'll talk more about that. They both have a 14 inch barrel, I believe they're exactly 14 inch or a hair over on it. And I think they're both cylinder bore, all right. They're both 12 gauge, and what else? They're, uh, they're both about the same price. They run around $400, uh, probably out the door, or, you know, I'd get them SRP, $430, $440, $450. You know, you'd probably get them for a little over $400. Just depends in your area. Uh, they're about the same weight. Now, if you look at the numbers, I think the Remington is maybe a half a pound more, or almost half, it, but not enough to matter. Nothing you notice picking them up you just really don't okay so and especially loaded because there's another difference you probably notice for those of you who can count all right uh the mossberg holds five rounds in the magazine remington holds four so you know you you get another round in the mossberg and even though the firearm's a little lighter than the you know then it kind of equals out anyway there's not enough difference to tell so I'm going to say they're about the same weight, same price. So they're very similar in most ways, really. There's just a few differences. Uh, you've got a different forearm, forearm on, the, of course, the Mossberg. Got the corn cob style there, and you've got the strap you know, there. And I put some ugly tape on mine just because it had some really rough uh, edges there where it was fastened and the screws and everything. But I left the strap on, so it feels fine to me. I mean, if you don't want to use the strap, you can kind of grab it all, I guess. But not a problem for me. John took his off. He probably is living dangerously. And uh, the Remington, you know, you've got the, the M-Lock uh, mag pull on there. All right. That's a big difference. Okay. Now this is still, this uh, Remington is still the, uh, the one we got from Bud's. And probably by the time you're seeing this, one of you has this shotgun. You've probably already bought it off the e-gunner auction. <laughs> I'm probably 100% chance of that, right? So how do you like it? <laughs> this same gun. Uh, and so again, we appreciate uh, BudsGunShop.com helping us out in that regard because that's why we're able to compare these. Uh, we get a lot of uh, firearms from them, so it was really nice to, to get that. Check out their website. And uh, also, don't forget to go to the description, join the NRA if you're not a member. Please, if you're a, a, interested in firearms, you need to support gun rights, okay? Uh, the NRA, the biggest, most powerful, not perfect, but they're the most powerful, so you ought to be a member. And then branch out and join your state organization or maybe your state organization first, whatever. But join the NRA too, then whatever else you can afford. That's what I do. I belong to about seven, I believe, okay? And I want to try to keep all those memberships up. Uh, so anyway, do what you can, what you can afford to do. Uh, now, the, the tape on the, the grips, this is hockey stick tape. It doesn't, hockey, yeah, hockey stick tape. It, <laughs> it doesn't come on them, but I put it on mine. And, uh, you know, whatever I do is, of course, something that's smart and brilliant to do. So I decided that whoever owns this gun, buys this gun on eGunner, should have it on theirs. 
right? I am arrogant in that regard. No, actually I'm not. I, I mean, I'll probably, I was thinking I'd just take it off. Uh, and I guess I will. It could be that you like hockey stick tape on yours and would want it on there, but I guess I should probably take it off before I send it back to Bud's. Uh, it's just a matter of tape, peeling it off. Um, but the reason I did that was I normally don't do much to a firearm that I'm sending back. You know, it's going to somebody else. Uh, I don't want to mess it up, paint the sights, and do the things that I would do if it were mine. You know, you've heard me talk about that before. But on this time, I wanted to compare them uh, apples to apples as much as possible. And it really feels better to me to have some tape on there, have something. I think Talon Grips makes, makes a great. I think they might have sent me one after I got this on mine, come to think of it. Uh, but uh, you want something on there, okay? Uh, and it feels so dramatically different. Now, here's John's. Now, when I pick it up, it's just dramatically different. I'd be bad-mouthing the Remington is what I was afraid of. I would say, well, this Mossberg just feels so much better than this Remington. And it would mainly be because the grip is so slippery for me. All right, so they feel the same. Uh, and that's one thing I want to talk about. And I shot them both there to begin with. Uh, John and I have uh, shot them both. We, we loaded them up. We have picked one up, fired it, picked the other one up, fired it immediately. Uh, we did it just before the video. Neither one of us can really tell any difference. Okay, now if we did it 10 times, I don't know, maybe we, there's just not enough difference to write home about. They feel the same, okay, especially we've got the same grip, same grip tape and everything. Now you got a little different feel there with the forend, okay, like I said, the differences are going to be the forend, uh, that's the, you know, the M lock, you know, that you got on that. It, it's, uh, and I'm not sure. I think I prefer the Mossberg, tell you the truth. I'm not going to definitely be hanging anything on a pump, I, I don't think, like that. You know, I'd do well to get my hand on there. But uh, yeah, it's okay though. Yeah, it's all right. I prefer this, I think. But there's no big problem with that. Uh, and of course, the steel receiver. A lot of the differences beyond what I've talked about are just the differences that you have on a Remington versus a Mossberg. And I've got a full size 870 here and I've got my Mossberg 590 A1 there. You know, same guns, you know, uh, the, the uh, where am I here? I'm getting lost. Yeah, here we go. The, uh, the 590 and then the shockwave, they're basically the same shotgun, right? And then the same with the Remington, you know, and the 870, it's just, just a cut down version of it, different grip, okay? Uh, so you have the same differences, you know, if you like a Remington because of where the safety is. Now this is that dressed up one by Wilson Combat. You know, it's got these uh, great sights on it and all that that I truly love. But still, generally you got the same operation of an 870, okay? Your location of your safety, cross bolt safety, and the feel of it, and uh, the, the uh, slide release up there, you know, versus on the Mossberg where it's kind of back here. And then you got your ambidextrous safety on your Mossberg. So it kind of depends on where you come down on, on some of those differences as to which of these you would prefer. Okay. If you just absolutely love a steel receiver, then you know you probably are gonna like the Remington. Or you like the feel of the foreign better on, on one of them versus the other one. Here's a Remington with a steel receiver. I mean they look alike, they're easy to confuse. Uh, you really have to almost look at the foreign to to keep track of which one you're, you're talking about. So there's not a lot of difference. I, I'll tell you, there's not a lot to fret over. If you're trying to decide which of these to buy, you're definitely gonna buy one of them. You know, you can't go too terribly wrong either way. Now, again, with Remington, you know, these days in the Freedom Group, you might wanna take that into consideration. I don't know. Uh, this thing has seemed to be fine. We fired it quite a bit and, uh, you know, seems to operate just, just fine, so. Uh, but that is an issue that bothers a lot of people, the quality control at Remington in recent years. Uh, so, you know, if you're a Remington person, you're probably going to prefer this one. Uh, and if you're like Mossbergs, you, you might prefer, prefer this one. I have no trouble with the alloy receivers, as I've said, on, on a Mossberg or a Benelli. You know, they work just fine. I don't know anybody who has broken the receiver on their Mossberg. <laughs> you know, I just don't. And uh, I'm perfectly happy with that. So, but again, there's just not a lot of difference in that. Let's, let's see, let's see, we're not gonna shoot a lot. Now, one of the differences, uh, you know, I think I covered all the similarities pretty much. Um, you know, they both require no paperwork. They're not NFA items. You all know that by now. They're not considered a pistol or a shotgun. They are a firearm, all that. 
But now the Mossberg, you can put an adapter on it and shoot the mini shells. That's why I got a few of these out here. And so I stuck that in John's just to show you. Uh, I don't know if you see this little piece of rubber. I see, I forget who got it. It's a guy of a Texas, uh, OPSO, OPSO or something. I just Googled it and found that and I uh, ordered a couple of those. And I have tried them on mine. They seem to work fine, these adapters. And uh, you, know, you watch, it won't work now, but uh, you shoot these mini shells in the Mossberg. And these are seven and a half, so I don't have any double lot buck in that or anything. Uh, so, what are we gonna shoot? Two liter. <laughs> 10, boom. All right, another two. Another one. Fun, 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 fun. Let's shoot that target. Wow, it just keeps shooting. I'll bet it's because I've got those little mini shells in it. So now if that's something that appeals to you, and that is pretty cool, I have to admit. Uh, now, some, I think the KSG will actually function those, as I've read, but uh, I'm not a huge fan of the KSG, but uh, I am of these, you know, the Mossberg. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, that is one point in favor of the Mossberg. And that's just a little rubber piece. You just you know, stick right in there and it comes in and out pretty easily, okay? So if you wanna shoot mini shells, and let's see, what did I, I learned? Uh, this holds, the Mossberg holds five rounds of two and three quarter uh, shells, and it holds eight of the mini shells in the magazine. So it's not like you get 15 in there or anything, but it was just holding eight, so. But that's nice, that's like a, a full length uh, shotgun basically. You get eight of those. And there's a, now I'm not an expert on these mini shells. I don't think Federal makes those, I think, but uh, they, they're available, I believe, in uh, Double Lot Buck and uh, Slugs, because I've got some Slugs and, and Birdshot I found. It's hard to find. Uh, so, you know, that might be something. And it's not like you're firing, uh, you know, 22s. Uh, those things have a little punch. Yeah, they really do, and I'm, I'm not, again, that familiar with them. There's probably some that would be adequate for defensive use. So, uh, you know, if you've got something this size with eight rounds or eight plus one, uh, 12 gauge, that ain't all bad, is it? Uh, and it doesn't recoil much. Not like a, I don't know, maybe a little more than a 410, but kind of in that neighborhood. Yeah, you could do worse, couldn't you? So that's that, that's a that's a plus in favor of the Mossberg, I'd say right now. Uh, it could be that this same company is working on that adapter for, or something like that, you know, for the Remington, I don't know. You have to keep track of that, same. So, what was I gonna do? We'll, we'll shoot double lot in both of them, okay? And then we'll, uh, I guess there's no reason to, to fire them a lot. I, I just wanted to give you some idea, at least what our thinking is on them. I think John and I both probably prefer the Mossberg, but uh, there's still not a lot of difference uh, between the two. Now this is the Remington, so it holds four. All right, and let's open another box and put uh, five would be good, put five in the, the Mossberg. Uh, the mini shells is a pretty neat capability. In this particular gun, John and I pretty much agree that the fact that it holds five uh, is a big difference maker, okay? Because that's one thing you're doing when you cut this thing down to this size is you're limiting your, your capacity. But with the Mossberg, you know, it's just five, and with this, it's four. That's, when you get down to that area, that's that's kind of a big difference. You know, what is that, 20%, something like that? So, you know, that's a plus. I've got five plus one. There's a lot of full-length shotguns that don't hold more than that. You know, they don't have a true full-length uh, magazine or whatever, so. All right, now this is, uh, what did I just put in there? I meant to put in some yeah, a double lot buck. Okay, that was all double lot buck. So this will kick a little more, but that's okay. Remington. Oh yeah, that's pretty stout. Oops, shot high. <laughs> nice. Another cowboy down there. Oh, that put the hurt on him. Quick. Now that that's for some pretty hot stuff. It was, uh, I guess, high brass, but doesn't hurt you you get a good grip on that that's all right you can stand it i have confidence in you here's some more of it tombstone wow look at that ouch ouch that would hurt Whew, wouldn't want to be on the other end of that 
Look at that, dead center of that little, of that plate. All right, I'll shoot the red one. Got some on him. I'll shoot that big thing there. Oops, we're empty. Uh, the reason I brag on myself here a little bit is that's one, again, another point. I've made this before. Some people make fun of these. They're just toys, they're junk. Uh, they're not worth anything. Hey, I wouldn't say that because you can pick that thing up and we're talking 18, 20 yards out there, you know, you know. And, and, uh, and of course, closer, it's even less of an issue. So they point very well. Uh, I would have no problem relying on one of these uh, in a self-defense situation, okay? And you could even be, I guess you could argue that it might hurt your wrist a little bit, but if you were trying to manage something, a door, a flashlight or something, uh, you could fire that thing one hand if you had to, you know, and hold somebody up, whatever. I don't know. You can do that with a shoulder gun too, but, um, you know, it's just not as worthless as some people like to make them out to be. As I think I mentioned in the first video of this, uh, I think some of that has gone away. People have uh, kind of learned and been shooting these and enough people that have a pretty good reputation in the firearms community uh, have, uh, you know, I think pointed out that there is some value in these that that uh, some of that has, uh, has fallen by the wayside. They're not total junk, okay? That's my point. Uh, I mean, they're not the end all, the be all of everything, uh, panacea. But uh, they're kind of neat. They're not that expensive, really, in the great scheme of things. And they work. And you got two of the major companies making them. Uh, and so it's kind of a why not if you want one. Uh, there's another company I've seen mention a lot. It's, is it Asylum Weaponry, the gatekeeper? You know, I don't have one. I actually wrote to them one. If they want to send us one, we'd put it, be, it would be in this video. But I didn't hear back from them. Uh, it just, you know, we're not, like I say, if there's, five of them out there we're happy to show them all but uh i expect there'll be more and more of them and uh because they're just they're pretty cool considering you don't need special paperwork so i don't want to take all day you've got things to do and uh is there anything i forgot to mention lots of similarities uh but then those few differences i talked about and uh, there's probably something I didn't mention, but uh, one of you will, will do the cleanup work for me. And uh, they both shoot fine. And uh, I, I kind of like them. They're, they're kind of fun. Let me shoot this one more time, okay? <laughs> they, I mean, they're actually kind of fun. Uh, like I say, if you come down on the side of Remington, you probably like the Remington better. Uh, if you like Mossberg, you probably like it better. One thing about the Mossberg I do like is that position of the safety. Uh, you know what I did there? Okay. Okay. Didn't have a slide all the way forward, I think. Yeah. Okay, there's five. Plus one. I think I put one in the chamber, didn't I? Let's find out. Yeah, I sure did. Cowboy. Tombstone. Cowboy. Other cowboy. <laughs> Red square. Uh, bowling pin, click, <laughs> we're empty. <laughs> so they're not hard to hit with. Uh, uh, they're very uh, user-friendly, you know, instinct shooting is just not a problem at all. So uh, so both of them I think are kind of fun and uh, you would probably enjoy it if you like shotguns. All right, so that's, that's one thing. And as far as the difference between the two, there's not a great deal. Uh, I kind of come down on the side of the Mossberg, I guess, personally, and I think John does, does too. But again, there's not that much difference. So uh, pick out the one you like if you think you got to have one of these and enjoy it. Life is good. Oh man, you guys watched that whole video? Well, not one to judge, but while you're here, I wanted to let you guys know about our friends over SDI, the Sonoran Desert Institute. They're a fully accredited online distance learning program. They offer hands-on experience. They also accept GI Bill. You can get certified in gunsmithing or get an associate's degree in firearms technology. So check them out when you get a chance over at sdi.edu. Also, uh, some of the new targets you may have noticed on our range are from shootsomesteel.com. So maybe give their website a look. And also um, the vault safe that you might have seen on our shooting table. You can check those out at vault Also, don't forget to check out our website, uh, hickok45.com. You can find all of our links to the different uh, social media sites that you can find us on, like full30.com, 
Um, the real Hickok 45 on Twitter, I mean on uh, Instagram, Hickok 45 on Twitter, uh, Hickok 45 on Facebook. There's also the Hickok 45 and Sun YouTube channel. Um, so just go to the website and you'll find most of that stuff and our t-shirts, of course. Um, you can find our, all of our merchandise for sale there on Hickok45.com. And man, I guess you guys are going to have to find something else to watch on YouTube because that's it. That's all I have to say. Appreciate it.